Hello, my amazing artists. Welcome back to Art With Me, Mrs. Knowles. And we are going to be using line and shape today to create a Victorian house. Isn't that cool? We're gonna use Victorian architecture to create this house. You are gonna add lots and lots of details to make it interesting to look at. And the supplies you need are pretty easy. So, are you ready to get started? All right. All right, artists, so the things that you will need to make this project are a piece of paper. I'm going to use a large piece of paper, but if you have something smaller, that will work too. A Sharpie, a pencil with an eraser or a separate eraser, and some colored pencils or something else to color with if you don't have colored pencils. All right, let's get started. So our inspiration for this project is Victorian architecture. If you are not super familiar with Victorian architecture, you can go to Google, type that in, Victorian architecture, and it will give you a lot of examples of different types of houses and buildings that you can look at to get some ideas for this project. If you are my student in class, I will show you some pictures but if you're not in my class, you can go and Google that. And when you look at my building that I finished, do you see all of the different uh, patterns that I use, patterns and designs? I try to fill every space with some kind of a different pattern. And that's that really makes your artwork more interesting, right? And it makes it pop more. All right, so I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna show you how to get started with your house. So you are gonna need your pencil and your piece of paper. And you notice that my paper in front of me, I have it tall ways, vertical or portrait style. Um, and that's because our house is going to grow and get very tall. But we're gonna start down here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna draw one line going across. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start stacking our shapes on top of each other. And I'm actually gonna go all the way across over here. So almost all the way to, the, to each side. Okay, now's the time when we're gonna start stacking our shapes. So I think I'm gonna put a square shape right here. You notice I'm using my pencil because I might have to erase some of my lines. I'm going to do a long or a tall tower over here. So I'm just making a straight line. And I'm going to do another straight line so that they're equal up here. And what else could I do? I could do a triangle for the roof. Now this is the side of the house over here. So I'm going to keep go a little bit farther. Go do a little ledge right here. It's a little rectangle. I'm going to divide these up here. So I've got some I've got some of my house kind of behind this front one, right? And let's see. Small triangle. And then since I kind of imagine this is a tower, I'm going to make it look a little bit more 3D. So I'm going to do a curved line like that and then add that on top. So what shape did I make? It looks like a cone, right? And then if I do this part curved at the bottom, it looks like a cylinder, right? So you can kind of make your shape, turn your shapes into 3D shapes if you want them to kind of pop out from. Okay, so I have a bunch of shapes on here. Now remember, yours should not look just like mine, right? I'm doing this to help you get started, but I want you to try using some different shapes. Okay, so now that I have my basic shapes and I know where they're gonna go, I'm gonna just start using my Sharpie and I'm gonna trace over the things that I've done
All right, so I traced it in Sharpie and then I erased my pencil so that my paper looks nice and clean. And if I made a mistake, it's gone, right? Um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is add windows and doors. And I want you to think about where you can put the windows and where is your front door gonna be? Or if you have, maybe you have some other doors as well. So I'm gonna do that using my Sharpie, not my pencil. All right, so did you notice that when I made my windows, I also went around them to make the windowsill or it's like the outer part of the window. It makes it look more realistic. Um, some of them I just decided to do like a thicker line and then on other ones, I just went around it with the same shape again. So like the inside square and the outside square. So try and make some different kinds of windows, maybe like three or four at least different kinds of windows. Um, so it looks like there's a lot of variety on your paper. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of divide up some of the larger spaces to start adding your details. So for example, maybe I decide that I wanna add a line right here for my roof. And then I decide that on this part of the roof, I am going to do kind of like, oh, what is it called? Like scales, like fish scales. So I'm gonna do that design on my roof. So, and then on each different part, I'm gonna try and think of some different designs. Now it's okay to repeat a design. Like if I decide that my scales are gonna go here, well then I can find another spot to put that as well, somewhere in the paper. So this is a great time if you're running out of ideas to go back and look at the Google search that you did for some different kinds of Victorian architecture. Because when you look at those pictures, you can get some great ideas for things to do on the side of your building. Like check this out, look how there's like an X on that building. So there's a lot of different interesting designs that you could do. So get some ideas if you're running out of ideas. Okay, wow, this is looking pretty cool, isn't it? Once you get all those designs on there, it looks pretty awesome. And the nice thing, one of the things I like about drawing the Victorian houses is that you have to remember these houses are like 150 years old about. So there, you don't have to worry about getting straight lines and you know, everything is perfect because if you actually go to a house and look at it, it's pretty old, right? It's not gonna look perfect. So don't worry about getting your lines perfect. And that is why I was using a Sharpie to draw because you can just draw and you don't have to worry about it. If you make a mistake, you can just fix the mistake and keep going, right? It's not a big deal. So our last step is to color. And I am going to use colored pencils for this um, if you had something else that was uh, that had a smallish point to it, like markers, you could use that as well. But um, you have lots and lots of details, right? So you're gonna need something that's small for those details. 
Um, so let's do a little um, refresher on how to use colored pencils. So there's a lot of different ways that you can draw with your colored pencils. One of those ways, I'm just gonna flip this over so you can see, is called hatching. That's when you go back and forth in a line and it just kind of creates the solid color. Now there's also something called cross hatching. And that is when you go back across what you've done and you go back the other way. So you can, you saw my lines are going vertical right now. So I would take it and I would make my lines going horizontal. And you can see that it starts to make your color darker when you do that. But also that's a great way to mix colors. So let's say I'm using my orange, but I think, you know what? I really want this to be more of an orange red color. Well, then I would take my red and I would go back across and cross hatch it. And the color that I get is more of an orangey red. So think about that as you are using your colored pencils. Okay, so here's a picture of my finished one again. And you can see that I actually chose specific colors to use, right? I chose a couple different greens and a couple of different purples, like light purple, dark purple. So choose some colors that you think would look nice together as you're coloring. Uh, maybe you choose complementary colors. Those are red and green, purple and yellow, colors that are opposite. Maybe you decide to do warm and cool colors. This is, this is all cool colors, right? So kind of decide on your theme of how you're going to color it before you start. I am so glad you joined me to make your Victorian house. And once you're finished, make sure you take a picture and send it to me so that I can see what you created. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.